By the names I have spoken, O Lupines, I curse you. I place my mark upon you, that you should be forever severed from your dead fathers and mothers. I damn you with my touch, that never again shall you rest in the lands of thy people. May the names of your ancestors be forgotten, and may their ghosts fade from hunger in the Duat. As I was cast out, so then shall you be exiled, voiceless, and lost forevermore. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm your host, Daniel Tyson, and this is Rage Across the Internet, everybody's favorite Werewolf the Apocalypse podcast. Yes, I'm host today. I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. But, on my left, Porter. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> In front of me here, producer Joey. Hey guys. And back again with us. Chris. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing good. How about yourselves? We're, we're good here. Yeah, I can't complain. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you always do. You can't complain just because you have to host this one. You've all been warned. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're, we're doing this again. We're, we're, I'm going to be your host. Well, not golly gee, confident. Mr. Tyson, how come you're hosting today? Not, not my favorite thing in the world. We're going to tackle the next of the tribes, our dreaded, dreaded Cursed Tribal Series. It's funny that you say cursed. <laughs> oh, I used that on purpose. <laughs> no, I, I definitely used that one on purpose. <laughs> what is our tribe of choice today? Hmm, if I say cursed, what is your biggest guess? <laughs> Children of Gaia? <laughs> When to go? Oh, when to go? Oh man, it's starting already. <laughs> Is the bunyip? <laughs> the bunyip. <laughs> All right, we're gonna tackle the Silent Striders today. Woo! <laughs> Yay! This, this seems to be a uh, a fan favorite amongst a, a large chunk. Yeah, yeah. People enjoy the Silent Striders. Well, they're a hell of a tribe. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite NPCs in our game. One of Porter's former players, or no, his former characters. Who is who is that, Co Porter? That's a segment Raidmaker. Such a cool, cool fucking character. Oh, thank you. See, I'm segment Raidmaker, Alpha of the Soundhound. Pleasure to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was the what was the line from last game, Joey? Oh, I, Echo was like fangirling all over segment, and she's like, "It's an honor to meet you." Right. He goes, oh, you know, nice to meet you. I'm a uh, segment rainmaker. And Echo's like, I know. He's like, I'm yeah, Echo. I know you do. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> but there's so much more to segment than just that, which makes him so cool. Well, oh. looks like maybe we had some technical difficulties. And, you know, let's just continue on with that theme of Kurt. <laughs> yes, let's continue on with that theme of Shit. cursed. All right, so Chris, still here. We're good here. Yep. That's, that's good. I'm here. So. I'm here. As a porter being a silent strider, tell us tell us about Sekhmet a little bit more. I can do that. Um, you know, Sekhmet Rainmaker, he's a third of the striders. Uh, he is the, um, you know, grew up in Akron, Ohio, <laughs> which was not a great place. Um, he was sort of a one-night stand fodder. Um, however, his mother did marry the guy for security for Sekhmet because she is full-blown guru. And I, I kind of fashioned her to be like a female Indiana Jones. Okay. Indiana Jones, if you will. <laughs> who, um, you know, wasn't around very much. So, you know, he, he grew up kind of on TV, on action movies, Charlie Bronson and, you know, uh, Jet Li, depending on your era. Okay. You know, um, he's he's definitely he's got a bit of um, a reckless nature. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, you know, he's uh, he's very talented. He's, he's he's good in combat, but largely he he gets by through that talent and a, and a large amount of luck. Mm. You know, he's the guy who sees a thing in a movie and says, "I can do that." <laughs> and sometimes and then we'll try out. it. Yeah, somehow and he'll get through it. So, hence, Rainmaker. Yeah, he you makes know, it rain. Yeah, he he does. He he makes miracles happen. 
just how'd you get through it? That's ridiculous. Um, he's a noted messenger. Um, his pack, the Silent Howl, also go with him on various jobs. So, you know, it's said that there's not a, a, a patch of Gaia that doesn't have the footprint of a member of the Silent Howl on it. That's bullshit, but it's what they say. <laughs> and then that rumor, we'll use air quotes there, gets spread real fast. Yeah, they're, um, they're a pretty famous pack. And uh, Sekhmet definitely reads the press. He's, he's a bit of a prima donna. Very talented third, but a total prima donna. And it makes it a lot of fun to play. <laughs> can only imagine. Again, you know, nice to meet me. <laughs> you know? But, you know, he's a silent strider. Yes. He's cursed. Yes. And, I mean, we keep throwing this curse out, and you read it for the intro. Yes, that was and, our opening quote. Yeah. So maybe we should start with, like, the history of the silent striders right. and talk about how they got cursed. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. All right. Well, you're no, the you're, host. Yeah. <laughs> but you said it first, so yeah, I was letting you do it. Boy. <laughs> she said it first. I was being courteous. Are you saying that that's what she said? Yes. Exactly. Terrible joke. I, but it worked. It wasn't funny at all. And I know. It, it was still true. <laughs> so tell me about the curse. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I feel like I've been doing a lot. Uh, Chris, you want to chime in on this, or you want me to take it? Uh, I'm sure I can go ahead on this yeah. one. You just looked a little lonely over there. I want to give you this, you know. <laughs> now, Chris, this I is know, your favorite I tribe, know. too, correct? Yeah, you wanted to be here they for this are. one. This is, this is your favorite really tribe. Did. So I'm, I'm going to share billing with it you is. on this guy. And in fact, my very first character also was a silent strider. But he wasn't as remarkable as Sekhmet, because uh, it was my first. But that's another story for another time. I'll save that for Discord later. There you go. Um, hey, cool. So, the curse. The curse, eh, there's a lot to it. It happened right when, I want to say when Egypt was still young. Yeah. Uh, so, it's been a long, long curse uh, for this tribe. And it, a couple things with it. First of all, it cut the Striders off from their ancestors entirely. They don't have access to their um, ancestral home realms. They don't have access to their ancestors. And as a result, they lose out on a lot that other guru take for granted, other tribes take for granted. Um, in addition, they're constantly wanderers. They cannot stay in one place for so long. Um, as a result of the curse, it reason behind that is it draws other ghosts to them. Um, not spirits, mind you, but ghosts, people who had died. Boo, get out. From, yeah. And, uh, what was it? There's something else. Well, they um, cannot find rest in their homeland in Egypt, uh, nor can yes. they regain Gnosis there. Yeah. So yeah. Egypt, which is their tribal, like, ancestral home, is completely cut off from them. They cannot uh, hang out there at all. So that pretty much covers most of the curse, unless I missed something. Constantly wandering. Constantly moving. Uh, by nature. I mean, uh, as brought up, they, they are haunted. On top of cursed, yeah, you know, I mean, it's part of the curse, but it's an extra thing. You're haunted too. You got the bonus package. <laughs> yep. So you know you um and you know as as Chris uh, definitely said, uh, ghosts, not spirits. Right. So this is the <laughs> <laughs> boo. Get out. <laughs> yes, this is boo. Get out. This is I was wronged in death. This is I'm angry about something. This is I have unfinished business. Help. Yes. And you can't ignore that except for they're following you. So you oh, gotta yeah. keep moving so they um, don't catch up, is what you're saying. And or you're gonna have to spend some time delivering teddy bears to relatives or tracking down the real killer. Yep. Uh, you uh, may leave a lot of time right? avenging these ghosts. Yes. And it turns uh, into ghost whisperer. Mm-hmm. Gross. Or ghost yeah. hunter. If instead of hunting ghosts, they were hunting stuff for ghosts. Oh. Also gross. <laughs> Um, and it's, yeah, it's an interesting side gig for him, I guess. Uh, cause they also can kind of use the spirits to their advantage though, or the ghosts, excuse me, not spirits. How so? Um, well, ghosts can be, cannot be seen by most people, so they can use them for things like surveillance. Uh, they can actually use them to help enact certain punishments too, um, 
I believe the Striders have a plethora of rights and gifts that allow them to kind of utilize ghosts in certain ways without like being total disrespectful dickheads. And hmm. well, they also um, deal with the, the realms of the dead. Not a lot, but more than the average guy. Right, right. They can actually travel to the quote underworld. To the deep umbra. Yeah, yeah. It's not a thing they like to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> it no. It doesn't sound like fun. It's normally only done in a- extreme circumstances. Yeah, when, when you start to put phrases like deep and dark in front of shit in the world of darkness, <laughs> it's, it's generally it acknowledged as bad news bears. Yeah. Yep. Bad idea genes. Bad idea genes indeed. But, you know, if you ever need to, for whatever reason, go there, your best bet is to find a strider to guide you. Yeah. Yeah. Joey had something. Um, well, I mean, we're kind of skipping over the Imperium. Oh, no, that, that's skipping shit. That was next. <laughs> but it happened first. <laughs> but it happened first. Before the curse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. see, that was kind of one of my questions. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a homeland until the Impergium, and that's when they chose the area around the Nile, which was not yet Egypt. What was it? Just, Just area? land. Around a river. Okay. Because not big on naming things yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of a joke so bad, I don't even want to tell it. Oh. Good. Good. Good <laughs> So we're just... Moving I mean, on. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right, um, so the Impergium. Yeah. What was their role? We got one. We got one. They stopped it. <laughs> Ding, 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 man. That's, that's, a, that's two. That's yep. two of... Shut up. It's a bunch. <laughs> we'll get the official tally later, but that is another one who have claimed to have been the Imperium. And I like... Um, well, they kind of give credit to Children of Gaia first. Well, but Children of Gaia didn't do it, though. N- yeah. They gave him credit for speaking up first. Yeah, that's... But not actually doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I really loved about how that worked, is, um, you know, the, the Children of Gaia... You know, went before the Silverfang King, um, Ducius the Fourth. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't remember the name. I don't close, remember close enough. enough. Take that, Sean. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 we love you, buddy. I will fix that in editing. Oh, no, you won't. Please oh. don't. Oh. Um, I really you know, hope you don't fix that. <laughs> went before the Silverfang King. You know, it was like the the Persium's immoral, man. It's cruel. It's cruel. Can we give peace a chance? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Silver Fang told the child of Gaia to get fucked. Right. And then next up steps the Silent Strider and says, we need it in the Imperium because this is stupid. In fact, it's idiotic was the Idiotic, yep. yeah. It, it was kind of like, um, <laughs> I want to give credit to Strides in this one. He, he gave me a little, uh, because the monkeys are getting smarter. And it, that was essentially it, is that the Impersion was calling off the sick and the weak and the old and the, and the infirm. So, really, we were calling them into being stronger. Mm-hmm. And the argument was, in a hundred years, they'll be hunting us at this rate. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the Silver Fang King told him, told the Strider to get fucked. <laughs> and I liked in this... But... I liked in this book how it gave, like, a time range of when the Impergium was happening. Yeah. When, you know, the humans started planting seeds and becoming an agricultural society, Mm -hmm. not a hunter-gatherer society. So that gives you a time frame. Right. And one we haven't seen before. Right. You know, and um, that was actually going to pivot to you on the, you know, the first time. Oh, the second. Yeah. The second time. Because that Strider didn't give up. Yeah. Yeah. He went. He went to the next king. Hmm. You know? And was told to get fucked. Yep. <laughs> and then he went to the third king. The same Strider? Yep. Through the course of his life, you know? Yep. Horizon Sight was his name. The the same Strider, Horizon's Sight. Yep. Horizon okay. Sight went to three different kings. So we're giving credit to ending the Impergium. To the Sound Striders. To the Silent Strider. Well, they're, they're giving. Sight. They're, they're, they're giving. giving. No, yeah. yeah. Let's make that very, very clear. This book... Told as the history of the Silent Striders is giving the credit to themselves Horizon Sight. as Horizon Sight. Yeah, you remember, I, I, I said there will be a few tribes. In fact, I said the majority, but yeah, you said the majority. we have not done the majority yet. I, I still might <laughs> eke out a win here. 
<laughs> You've got a long way to go, buddy. Yes, I do, but it's another one in my fucking column here. Uh, <laughs> Now, and to expand on that, it was something that was touched down upon in, in the Strider book that I thought was cool, is it talked about the other Pharaoh and the Impersion. Right. Insofar as that, you know, well, and, and I'm going to paraphrase here, that, you know, well, they claim that the other Pharaoh didn't participate, but even the fucking Korax's war form incites a delirium. Yeah. So there's got to be some bullshit to that. And in fact, a little bit later, it talks about how the, the, the Striders would run envoy between silver fangs and other fera kings trying to get them to stop the the impersium yeah and i kind of call bullshit on all of that <laughs> all right i mean you know me I, I love this tribe yeah i'm gonna call bullshit when it's I hear one it. of your favorites it is but if i smell bullshit you're gonna hear about it yeah please tell us well before you call bullshit because they called the fera not stopping the impersium an inciting factor for the War of Rage. So I thought <laughs> that was spectacular. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's funny. Because I, I always thought the, the Imperium was paused so we could do the War of Rage. Yeah. And then tried to come back to it and it didn't work out too well. That's what I was taught. Mm-hmm. In, in Garu school. I don't know about you two. <laughs> Garu school. <laughs> yeah. No, it says that the Pharah, their first act of of open rebellion was not stopping the Imperium. It's crazy. But then, you know, they're actually saying, hey, they weren't involved in the Imperium. It's crazy. So which one is it? it? It's, who knows? <laughs> but see, this is where I call bullshit. I, I was going to say that. That's where you're... Um, it, you know, I call bullshit. And I call bullshit here is because who the fuck are the Striders to tell us? This is a tribe that doesn't have access to their ancestors. So who are they asking? You know, the Geta Fenris can call up his great, 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 great grandfather's ancestor spirit and go, Hey, Klaus Jorman Gunther Eater Man, <laughs> what happened here? Eater. And and he'll he'll hear you know he'll get a story, yeah, accurate or no he'll get a story he'll get an answer, a yeah, quote, at least as an answer, a quote first hand answer. Mm -hmm. The Striders don't have access to their ancestor spirit, so what they're doing this off fucking memory. That's what it's telling us. I don't. I call bullshit. Galliard after Galliard after Galliard after Galliard. Exaggeration after exaggeration after no, exaggeration. Purple monkey dishwasher. No one has gotten this wrong since the dawn of fucking time. Bullshit. That's the only story they keep remembering. It, right. It's the only perfect story. That's it. Yep. They couldn't I remember mean, anything else. This is a giant game of telephone coming from before <coughs> Egypt had a name. Right. I look Striders, I love them. Bullshit. <laughs> I love how we're going back in the speculatory the the speculative I'm saying that fucking wrong. I love how we're speculating that again. Like I miss part of this, the speculation on these on these different oh, tribes the, is oh, so okay. awesome. I like doing it. Sometimes I just don't have you know nothing speaks to me. But you know, going through this book to go, yeah, we don't have any answers to spirits to verify this. But it turns out, like the dawn of civilization, we were totally running with messages with the fair. The I mean, fuck you, you weren't. You don't know. <laughs> you don't wrote, know. Someone wrote it down, and they just kept passing that same note. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they were paid in. Gold coins, favors, and fetishes to run messages between the Farah courts hmm. and Guru Kings. Yep. Sure. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. Knowing as we do that the Sunstriders penchant for rocking around with uh, Bastet Hakars and. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know? <laughs> you fucking <laughs> and, liars. And ghosts following them. Boog it out. Well, I mean, that's, this was. Potentially before. This pre curse. Yeah, before the Oh, curse. that's right. Okay. So, if it was in Persian happened, mm -hmm. and then the curse, why the curse then? Why did the curse happen? Oh, the curse happened. Um, oh, we know it happened. Yeah. <laughs> but, but. Well, they were, they were fighting a war on four fronts in Egypt. They had four main enemies. They had the newly insane worm. Oh, okay, so the worm that yep. was entrapped by the weaver who went insane. Yes. Okay. 
So they deemed that their their biggest enemy. Right. Which makes sense. Certainly. They had um, help me with the pronunciation, Porter. The cult of Sol oh. Soltek. Sol what? Wasn't it the cult of Seketh? Well, it's Sutek. Yes, he Danny was saying Sutek. And and I, I feel like Chris, I feel like we're on our wow show by saying Sathic. <laughs> like like as soon as I heard Danny say it, I'm like, we just have been because we played wow. <laughs> I S -U -T -E -K -H. mean, I've been calling him. I've been calling him Seketh uh, since before that was a thing in WoW, honestly. But um, we can just go with Seta. That's yeah, yeah. They're that's, they're, they're they're that's their ancient name. They're the followers. We of know Seth. them. Uh, We'll just go with that. Yes. That's fine. Everyone knows what we're talking about now. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, then they had wizards. Also called the name breakers. Name, name breakers makes more sense than wizards right now. And Ooh. then, then my favorite, <laughs> they had these wacky immortals. <laughs> oh, yes. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay. And the immortals were deemed the least threat because there were the fewest of them, but when you kill one, it's, they would come back. Its soul would go to the underworld. They would reform their body and come back. And by the way, that's also known as a bane mummy. So just that's think about cool. that. <laughs> that's really kind of cool. What's a bane? Worm. It's a worm spirit. Yeah. Yes. And, and that is. In a mummy. That's freaky. <laughs> and it keeps... There's a little bit more to it than that. Oh, yeah. But if, And that's the least of the threats. And those are the least of the threats. Right. That's, that's the least important thing I got going on today. I got mummies alive over here. It's no big deal. <laughs> and they also, yeah. have, they also have been known to work with the set-type vampires. Work with the set-type vampires? Yes. Now, this tribe is very well known to be the... Vampire hunters. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll use air quotes around that too. But they work with the vampires. Mm-hmm. Please, please, please explain that because I. Well, no, no, they, the, no, no, the no, bane no. mummies. Yeah. Oh, okay. The bane, the bane mummies are working with the vampires. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That makes so, more sense now. Na you now, now you have vampires that have pet bane mummies. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> vampires with. Yeah. So, you know, they were they managed to take the god set mm -hmm. and put him in torpor. It's our boy Shu Horus. <laughs> um, My man. Along with Nethius and Shu Horus. What? I think it was Nethus. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. actually listed in the Setite clan book. As a child of Osiris. So, Joey, being our vampire expert, found a little useful nugget of info. You know, it goes past a little bit past speculation here. So, um, in the Strider book, she's listed as Strider kin kinfolk that used sorcery to extend her life for centuries. And in the Setite book, she is listed as a child of a god. A.K.A. the Sedai guy. No. Horus. Or Osiris. Yeah. Osiris. Not Set. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to make Set's, sense of it. Set is the bad guy. Okay. And he killed a bunch of Egyptian gods. Mm -hmm. He left alive Isis and... Nephthys. Yeah, no, Chris is called Nephthys. Okay. Nephthys. Um, those are the two that he left alive, and on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Showing mercy. <laughs> Tell this story. He's you know, he so God. And then our man Shu Horus <laughs> teams up with <laughs> Nephthys, and they put Set in torpor, and before he goes down, he turns her into a vampire. And, you know, lays down the curse. curse. Mm-hmm. And the Striders have been levels of fucked ever since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, again, it's not even speculation at that point. It's 
just reading the info yeah, and it's, putting it's, it's there and putting the points together. Yeah. That's that's crazy fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So the Striders accidentally got involved in a god war. Mm-hmm. Like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> they accidentally fumbled into a god war. Oops. Yeah, but yeah, they, they took down Summit. But not I mean, really. Total war, but... But not really. We, I, I have to wonder if they finished the job if we wouldn't be talking about curses right now. Mm. And then I have to wonder, why didn't they finish the job, shoe horse, you prick? <laughs> <laughs> well, and like, I mean, they they bound him under the earth. So that that sets up... You know, for like the week of nightmares and the antediluvians rising and all that fun stuff. But what? What? Yeah. Again, what? What's you're the, the vampire expert? Fine. What, what's the anti-deviled egg? <laughs> <laughs> but but give a little explanation, please. Okay, so Cain was the first vampire, right? And then you have like the second gens. Those, you know, he his, made his offspring. Well, the people he. Cain directly embraced. Mm-hmm. And then you have the third generation, which is set in his group. Okay. Okay. So those are the antediluvians. Those are the ancient ones. They're they're super powerful. And when the Red Star and the, the apocalypse happened, mm-hmm. there was a week of nightmares. Antediluvians started rising. And people literally were falling dead because of the power of the antediluvians rising. But that, then you said that was at the apocalypse, so that yeah. hasn't happened has yet? Hasn't that happened yet. Okay. Nope. The, the set is Forward. still buried in the ground. Hopefully he'll stay there. Uh, you know, again, I I'm, don't want that to happen. The more time I'm starting to get mad at my boy Shoe Horace. Should have finished the job. Maybe he drew a map and said, "There, there's the fucker. Let's go get him later. <laughs> there's a stick sticking out of the ground. You know, you pull that stick out and the antediluvian rises. And Something. Yes. Maybe like a, like a snake and an arrow pointing underground. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. I, I think it said at the time um, they didn't have a, a real means to actually destroy Set. But they could keep him kind of imprisoned. Yeah, he's um, a god, so... Well, I'm saying you'd be surprised how many things that a good decapitation will kill. <laughs> Almost anything. I'm hey, just saying. No. If not anything, we call a couple Koraks, drop some slivers of Helios. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just, just seems kind of lazy now. Now that I think about roasted. it, <laughs> I think maybe I'm not in the Striders anymore. <laughs> the lazy ass shoe Horus. Right, well, I get it because we know that there's the history. With the uh, the Striders and the Vampires. Yes. And you, you got it right there, man. Yes, that's pretty much it. Now, you mentioned this with the Bonars episode, but you wanted to wait till today. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's some bad blood there. There's some, there's some beef. Oh. Chris, you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, the beef is between their totems, and it kind of spo- uh, spills out to the tribes as well. Uh, the Strider's totem is Owl. And as we all know, the Bonars is Rat. Yes. And what do owls eat? <laughs> hmm. Food chain. So it's kind of an interesting little rivalry between the two tribes. Um, the Bonars get really upset at the Striders if they leave little offerings for Owl. Which is, in fact, Owl's band, so that shit happens on the monthly. I was going to say, Yeah. So it gets... It gets a little heated between the two. Not that they can't work together, they just prefer not to. I can't imagine why. And not not great friends. Well, and I think no. it's interesting because there is a section of Bonars that follow Jackal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they are are I don't want to say BFFs because it's the world of darkness and <laughs> yeah, we're gurus, so mm, BFFs is a stretch. But they actually will work with the Silent Striders with, without any beef mm-hmm. because they follow Jackal. And only the ones with Jackal? Um, well, it, the ones following Rat are definitely never, ever going to work <laughs> with the, you know, I mean, it's got to be apocalypse level 
<laughs> Only if they absolutely have to. And even then. And, uh, um, but there is a segment of, of Bonars that follow Jekyll, which it sounds pretty Egyptian and silent stridery to me. It, it does. So. But there was some um, disagreement. Yeah. <laughs> between between even them. Right. Uh, around the fall of Kem. And, and that's um, a problem. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> and I love how it's discussed in the Bonar book. But it's not discussed in the Silent Strider book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they want to, they don't believe it's happening or it's like, if I don't remember it, I guess it didn't happen. Yeah, maybe they don't yeah. remember because they keep talking to their fucking ancestor spirits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Boom roasted. Man, their credibility is just getting... <laughs> You're taking uh, hits today, man. It's fun about this because, like, we've read the books when we were kids. Yeah. And we fell in love with certain tribes. Yeah. yeah like I said, the, the Striders is a it's a large, it's a fan favorite of a large yeah. chunk. And then we read the books while doing research and we go... Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not something I remember. <laughs> right, or where this is supposed to be right here. Yeah, why isn't this in here? And, like, I would love to really explore the rivalry between the Bonars and the Silent Striders in terms of the Fall of Chem, but we only have so much time, you know, to, to do our research and to double check and stuff because, you know. Lives and yeah. jobs. And right, and, you know, like, I, I don't want to be the asshole here, but, like, I've forgotten more about Werewolf than you know, Danny. Well, that's <laughs> obvious. You know, like, you know, it's, yeah. it's not a dig on you, it's no, just it's that... Just, there's a lot to know. Uh, you know, we were reading this shit when it was coming out brand new. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the whole library to go, where do I start? You're overwhelmed. Well, we started a book at a time because next month the next thing came out. Right. So it's a lot easier, too. Yeah, and then, then the bad uh, the bad blood between those two tribes. So you read that part from the Bonar section, you stop. Because I know we're doing Silent Striders next, because how great is that work? Right. And then you go look at the Silent Strider part, and it's not there. No, it's probably in Rage Egypt. But yeah. we didn't have time allotted to look into Rage Egypt. And, and how did you know that until you see that it's not there? Exactly. So I hate you for bringing up that question. but Because <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to talk about it. I just, I didn't have time. I'm, I'm sorry. To, no, it's all right. Well, I, I should have told you. Yeah, I probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's my bad. What? That's what you get for making me host. Well. Well. It's fine. <laughs> but no, there was the fall of chem. Yes. And it is mentioned in Bonar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um. Now I have to go and read that. Right. I have never actually looked at the Bonar's book. Oh, it's oh, a great so book. That yeah, highly endorse it. And, and the funny thing is, is, yeah, we can't even talk about it from the Bonar perspective, I don't think, because I told everyone, don't worry about it, because I'm really excited to handle it. So I think nobody read it. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> if you I, know, I if did. you did, drop some knowledge. Holy I shit, did. please. I did. Thank and, fuck for that. Uh, <laughs> Joey Knuckles, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, um, when the Silent Striders were having their problems, you know, with the war on four fronts, they called out for help and they actually went through the jackal connection and you know they asked the bonars for help hmm. to hold their cairn and the bonars went no nah, we're good <laughs> because it doesn't sound like they went no nah, no no we're okay it's it sounded more like uh fuck you well <laughs> we got our own shit to deal with the Bonars that, that followed Jackal actually went and helped them. But only the ones who followed Jackal? Yes. Okay. And the problem with the ones that followed Jackal is they follow Jackal. <laughs> so they got, they you know, they have problems following orders. They have problems, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's not the best totem to follow. It really is not. Just a bunch of little shits, really. Yeah, basically. Um, and... It's like maybe two percent of all bonars. Oh wow! So it's a for being one of the largest tribes. It's a very small amount. Yeah, and, and they still couldn't help out the Striders. And Rat went, Nah, you go help them, you lose me. Okay, so it's not like they wouldn't help; they couldn't. Help. They they could have. They could have. They, they made a choice. They were told no. They made okay. a choice. And the neat thing about the Gyro Nation, if I may, mm -hmm. is that um, 
the difficulty of that choice mm -hmm. is not something that the wronged party gives a rat's ass about. A rat's ass. You no. see what I did? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of an ultimatum, though. Yeah, yeah. So can the Striders really blame the Bonars for that? Yes. yes. I mean, yes, I get that. Yeah. Should they blame them is the question. I, I know they do blame them because that's, obviously that's the bad blood right there. But Well, well I would make the argument, okay? Um, let, let's, look at, let, let's look at things. Mm -hmm. Let's speculate a little bit. It is that had, had the, 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 the Jackal Nars... <laughs> for just for clarity's sake, clarity, yep. you know, said nah, fuck it. The strainers, they they're in trouble. Yeah, maybe shoe horse has like an extra assistant, and we take care of this whole set nonsense. And there's not a curse, so you have a tribe that otherwise loses all these things. They still have them. They still have access to their their ancestors. They still have their homeland. They're not haunted. By ghosts constantly seeing dead people like hey but you're fucking Osmond that it shits off the you know it's gone mm -hmm. all right and then as a result like thirty bone nars have their totem mad at them and maybe they join the Striders instead or maybe they make it up to to rat um, what's what's the bigger loss here that rats mad at some bone nars one time or that an entire tribe loses access to their ancestors in their homeland but yeah. again but again you're playing the game. From the end. Yes. <laughs> if you play it from the beginning. Certainly. You don't know that that's going to go down that way. You're like, no, nah, they got this. That's true. But we didn't ever <laughs> <laughs> promise to be balanced or fair. <laughs> we have never promised that. We have promised to be honest, but never balanced or fair. <laughs> so while I like the bone ours. They can go fuck themselves because I am Team Strider. <laughs> because okay. of that reason. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. That the ultimatum, it, obvious. There was an obvious choice. If they were, were going good people. <laughs> well, I mean, I think they're good people. I think they, they just were make put a stupid in. Choice. They were put in an impossible position. And um, to, to be. I probably, if I were the Bonars, I wouldn't know any either. Yeah. <laughs> because even then, let's say, <laughs> you, but that's the thing, if we're going to speculate, but let's say it, it went the other way. Who's to say that uh, Owl would have picked them up too? Like, oh, we don't we don't follow Rat anymore? Rat dropped us? Owl will pick us up. Who's to say Owl's going to do that? That's true. But, and I think maybe this could be a nice segue. Mm -hmm. Do you think this would be a good segue? Right okay. to the tribal totem. Yeah, you know, did their own purpose. Owl <laughs> isn't an asshole. No. Like, like, uh, like Rat is. <laughs> it is Rat is an asshole. He's awesome. And he's mm. a badass and he's a scrapper. But he's also a prick. <laughs> well, that depends on which version of Rat you're talking about. Chris, you got something for us? I know you've been, uh... <laughs> you've been pretty quiet over there. Yeah, you've been tending to some stuff. We've been watching. Yeah, sorry about that. That's um, fine. No, I... Owl is awesome, honestly. And I love Owl's brood and everything that owl stands for honestly and that's one of the reasons that drew me to the tribe in the first place besides the whole egypt theme but um god i had something and it just kind of yeah uh, yeah come back to me in a minute <laughs> <laughs> okay well don't don't be don't be shy just, you know you know what to, you know what to do oh, i'll try <laughs> so we kind of drifted into owl's brood there well owl has a hell of a brood yeah um i'm not gonna I had to make notes on him. I'm not going to struggle with the names. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Okay. But, um, and, and this is actually something that actually Rat takes offense to, is one of them is, um, I, think, I believe it's the Twice Born. Oh, yes. Yes. Which is essentially the, skele the skeleton of a rat that I was already eaten. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would take offense to that, too. Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, owl, people think about owl, and I think they think of two things. Mm-hmm. I think they think of Mr. Owl, who never made it without biting, and I think and I think they think about oh. giving a hoot oh. and not polluting. Oh, oh. you oh. son of a bitch again! I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not even making jokes. I'm thinking like people at large think about that when they think owl. I think those are the two things that people think of first when they think of owl in our world. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, we're festooned right. in pop culture. I'm not making a joke there. No, that's what I mean. You're right. It's it's still kind of funny, but you're absolutely right. And a couple of years ago, owls became like super popular. 
I mean, mm. figurine, it, it just exploded out of nowhere. I did not know that. Yeah, that's yeah. news to me, too. Yeah. No, and, like, I, I'm not an owl collector. I never have been. But for some random reason, people started giving me owl stuff. <laughs> like an owl coffee mug, you know, owl fuzzy pajamas. It was weird. Did you so, tell yeah. me you were a wanderer? N- no. <laughs> this fucking guy. Um, <laughs> but see, that I mean, owl is, I mean, yes, a totem of wisdom. Mm-hmm. But I want to keep, I want you people to keep in mind that, that I was a bird of prey. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. He's a fucking hunter, not a scavenger. So, by the way, if you're a third, you need to talk to Owl for maybe, like, your rank challenge. Mm-hmm. Kill the fucking squirrel you're going to offer up as tribute. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Yeah. They, they eat their meat live. You... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Catch, um, catch the squirrel. Don't kill it. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, but, Danny. But, but is a bird of prey, is a hunter, is a killer. Mm-hmm. You know, those talons, that beak, that is for rending flesh. Owl is a badass. Owl is connected to the lands of the dead. You know, and yes, is a totem of wisdom. And might I add, the whole gives you wings in the umbra, that's kind of neat. <laughs> that's really cool, though. Yeah, yeah sure you know, that's the, the full Red Bull treatment. We're into it. But... <laughs> and, the, and I'm sure that hugely helps, too, when they're constantly moving. You know, it, uh, Owl is a badass. Mm-hmm. Agreed. You, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you know, Rack can be pissed. I don't know what. <laughs> you, you can't blame we'll him. get over it. Really. No, okay. you, you can't blame him. But. But again, they didn't know what was going to happen. And, you know, yeah, it's like asking your cousin to help you move. You know, there's a chance they're going to say no. Maybe you don't just ask one person. Well, and I would make the argument that that was the only viable option. You know, you got to keep in mind. I mean, I think this is something that people forget about every now and then. Is especially back then. Mm. Okay. So today, right, let's use some familiar examples. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, you got the Sept of Summer in, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Everyone's favorite. You know, oh, maybe well, ours. Our maybe they're sick of hearing it. Our favorite. <laughs> and then you have the, you know, the sept of the Scratch and Wolf down in Delacroix, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. There's not a moon bridge that connects those. No, you got to hop like three or four different ones. Or if that's not an option, you hop a plane, or you take a car, mm-hmm. and you're on the road for two or three days. That wasn't an option then. No. You know, so you go. We need help. We know of one sept. Yeah. That's the only one we know of. We don't, we can't take it, we can't hop a fucking, you know, go, go fly Qantas and see what, what else is out there. <laughs> we can't Qantas. go out road, and we're not running dune buggies to look for other cairns. You're fucked. Yeah. These are the only guy game you know of in town and they say no, too bad. There's no one else to talk to. Yeah. And it took you days to get there. <laughs> right. And by that time... So, uh, Sept has fallen. She very well could have. Yeah, they would <laughs> suck. So I think there's but a level... Interesting, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, interesting enough, though, you bring the whole travel and time, though. If you look at the Striders as a tribe, though, a lot of their gifts evolve around travel. Well, I think that has to do with the curse. What no, were their, actually. What were their gifts before they, you know... Yeah, so you set your source on that, man. Nomads, though. Well... I mean, they picked Egypt as their homeland in the Empergium. They so, did, as their protectorate. But they were still always nomads, though. I, I They've mean, always been nomads. They're, they're, I mean, there's a level of truth to that, but both of those things are true. So, mm-hmm. you know. Where do you go? You know, which, <laughs> which side do you pick? It, sort of. You know, I mean, yeah, you can have them that, oh, we're going to go explore for a bit, but now we're coming home. Mm-hmm. You know, to, to break that down to the Silent Howl, to, to really small scale that shit, to just segment. Mm-hmm. You know, that that pack lives in, Dela, in the de, off of the Delacroix Sept, above a bar run by a kinfolk. That's home. You know, yeah, they might be gone three months out of the year, but this is where they come back to. This is home. So you have those roots and you have the nomadic lifestyle. But I have to agree, I think a lot of those gifts were forged over the years post-curse as a necessity. 
I can concede that. Yeah, certainly tireless running could be helpful for, say, escaping ghosts. Yes. Oh, tireless running, yeah. Because, man, I am tired of the sixth sense. <laughs> <laughs> I just want some sleep. Let me run for three days, and then we'll tend to it. Yeah. Well, I thought that was pretty cool, though, the tireless running. Because they can just keep going, and the only energy they do is off their spiritual energy until they stop. And then they need to eat and sleep. Yeah. And, then, and, and, yeah. Don't stop. Yeah, don't stop. <laughs> and, and let's see, while we're on it, how about the um, maybe more vampire set trick gifts and fetishes? Oh, the uh, Damn the Heart Flood, right? Damn oh, the Heart Flood. I mean, it, it says specifically uh, it's not specific for vampires, but um, really, come on. It, it's it's it, for the it specifically it's mentions vampire. blood pool. Yeah, yeah. Blood pool. <laughs> come on. But it so says all that of those... all of the creatures out there with a blood pool, and also I guess vampires. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's my point. It's like there's two or three that it mentions in there, but it's it's absolutely for the vampires. It's totally for the vampires, and for those of you who haven't played vampire, don't know what we're talking about. You know, you're not missing much. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Boom oh. roasted. <laughs> Boom roasted. Oh. Boom we're, hosted. We're gonna, yeah. <laughs> we will take this outside after <laughs> after we're done recording. Oh, uh, blood pool is basically like rage. Yeah. It's, it's basically the rage bar, only they can drink it and heal, I guess, too. Yeah. It, it, it covers a lot of a lot of the, you know, rage gnosis. Their powers. Yeah. It allows them to heal. Um, and that gift, the damn the heart flood, stops them from using the blood pool. Which... Stops them from using pretty much any of their powers and their abilities. Yeah, yeah. It's it's bad. If only Shoe Horse had that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> he did have a desire, though, which again is a, is a weapon. Oh, that one's so fun. Desires are cool as hell, but these are vampire hunting tools. Right. So... You know, I, I, yeah, I think a lot of the tribal identity came post curse rather yeah. than pre curse, yeah. or at least it changed the the direction and that's, evolution of the tribe fundamentally. Nope, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's yeah, a I mean, really good way to put it. There, there's a reason I picked what I did for the quote for the episode. Right. I right. think if there weren't for the curse, the Striders would not be the Striders. Yeah, and I mean, you can they chicken and egg else. this. Sure. You can chicken and egg this all you want, but I think you're correct. I I think that. They took a left-hand turn at that curse, and it's just plotted their path. You know, why would they have, you know, gifts and rites and rituals mm -hmm. that have to, you know, deal with home and hearth if they can't have their homeland? You're right. You're down. It's, there's no other way to put that. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You know, it just, it, that's, that was where their focus is. And, you know, when you've got a hammer, all your problems are nails. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I think I need to use that. Yeah, I'm, I'm stealing that too. I'm, like, I'm going to steal it for work. <laughs> but you, you mentioned the Messiah. When, when I was reading on that one, they, they also mentioned the um, Owl's Talon Messiah, which, according to the history, there's only like two in the entire world. I see a three. You, you believe it said three. Oh, but okay, well, so it's either two or rare. three. <laughs> <laughs> I was going with two because Owl has two feet. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, why not go with one because Owl has one head? <laughs> it's just a talon, though. Rare. But they, rare. there are more than one talon on a foot. Okay, well, maybe. So why Either not? way. Two or three. How many toes do you have, Danny? <laughs> uh, nine. So more than one, though. What? So more than one, though. <laughs> there was an industrial accident. It's okay. It's very specific. Look, those those old paper cutters were not toys. <laughs> That's why those don't exist in schools anymore. No comment. Okay, so oh, wait, what does sorry. this... Danny was correct. There are only two. Oh, oh see, yeah, look at that. Vindicated. So, Go me. What does this Desaya do? The Desaya was like it was a... A crescent moon shaped blade. It was sharp on the inside and the out. Well, right, was, but how was the owl's talent one different? It, you brought it up. <laughs> no, you're right. I, I, I didn't write that down. Oh, no. Do you want me to. Yes, I do. Go over it? You, you I'm just said it right here. You just said you looked it up. You might as well no. bring it down. <laughs> do it. Help me out, Chris. So. 
in the book, it is a curved blade um, carved to resemble not the crescent moon, but the clutching talons of an owl. The owl talon has all the qualities of the standard fetish, um, in addition to a second spirit, that of a desert owl that is bound to the blade. When the knife is activated to drain Gnosis after a successful strike, the owl spirit snatches the energy up and channels it to the wielder, who adds it to his temporary Gnosis. The wielder's Gnosis may never exceed his permanent rating in this manner. Also, the wielder may activate the fetish after a successful blow against an Egyptian vampire. If successful, the blood point is drained from the vampire and converted into Gnosis. Uh, this gnosis is dark and unnatural and may, be, and may push the werewolf into frenzy as long as the character has the tainted gnosis in his pool. His difficulty to frenzies are reduced by one point per, uh, by one per point of tainted gnosis. Once the affected points of the gnosis are spent, the guru's frenzy difficulties return to normal. And that's just the owl talon to Saya, correct? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's so the that's, souped up yeah, guy. That one's, the, yeah. that one's talon crescent shaped whereas the regular desire was the crescent moon shaped mm-hmm. yes okay i believe the, ta- the owl town is missing the point at the hilt oh interesting i believe either way his eyes are red as shit <laughs> <laughs> yes agreed so y- y'all can have your freaking clays and shit the sires are the best i uh, segment has both he's fine so <laughs> whatever he's got one of each he's got one for each hand <laughs> I was actually looking at the camps. Okay. Ooh. Oh, the camps. Yeah. I love the camps in the Strider book, honestly. Well, they're some of my favorite and most disturbing. Yeah. Um, they have a camp called the Swords of Night, which their one goal is to kill vampires. Well, just, just yep. I mean... Flat out. That's fine. Yeah, that's... It's, <laughs> They're, they're still doing guys' work, and I can see where they might hold a grudge. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> and, like, the Harbingers and the Dispossessed want to collect allies. Mm-hmm. Um, the Harbingers just value any ally. Like, hey, they're they're rocking the Rolodex. The yeah, Dispossessed... Yeah, kind of a, well, the Harbingers, they kind of seem as, like, the wisest. Yeah. But the Dispossessed are looking to maintain allies and contacts of Guru. So they want to reach out to the other Guru tribes. Yeah. Keep the Alpha team. Keep the A team up. Yeah. Um, I like the Seekers, though. The Seekers are so cool, and it absolutely reminded me of Sekhmet until Porter absolutely goes, yeah, he's that's part of it. That's his camp. <laughs> See, I didn't know that before. <laughs> Did you did you get to the part where the Seekers have the ritual to bring back a dead tribe member? I did not, yeah. but holy shit. Uh-huh. Tell me. Okay. They don't use it lightly. No. Well, I can't imagine they would. No. It sounds um, like it, there'd be some kind of sacrifice for this. It's the ritual of life, and it is to bring back a, a guru from the dead. To, to rescue their soul from the underworld. Okay. Um, if they want to use it on a silent strider, mm-hmm. it has to be before the body cools. Okay. It has to be quick. Yeah. Um, like, right away. Immediately. Um, it's an intelligence ritual roll. <laughs> Difficulty 10 for striders. <sighs> yeah. Or 8 for other guru. <laughs> other guru. Other other tribes. Which it's is crazy. Diff 8. See, to me, I, I, I would reverse that. Um, so when... But that's me. When they, they you know, roll those, those dice and they get their successes mm-hmm. and they stuff the soul back in the, in the corpse... <laughs> um, <laughs> the weird way to put it, but yeah. <laughs> the, the character that has been resurrected mm-hmm. has to go into the Umbra, like, at ASAP. Immediately. Yeah. Or they take three ag per turn that they don't go into the Umbra. Until they return or they die. Yes. Um, if you fail to roll, if you fail to roll, you just fail. It, it just, the body... Yeah. Uh, the, Sucks for yep. you. Yep. Um, my favorite line was, if you botch, oh the results are up to the storyteller. So, okay, as storyteller, <laughs> how would you play that out? 
Well. <laughs> well. Well. Pet Cemetery. Oh, yep. fuck. Like, no brainer. You know, you make him think it worked. And this would be the kind of thing that you wouldn't roll. Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll. Because if it botches, I don't want you to know it botches. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So you, they can't know about it then. Oh, Jesus. Pet Cemetery. Christ. <laughs> Oof. That's rough. Well, uh, you're trying to bring a dead yeah. guru back to life. I mean, it's not fighting the death bear, much like um, <laughs> some guy, I forget who. But it's, uh, you know. Kurt? Yeah. <coughs> Kurt Wormfo. Kurt. At least it's not. It was Miles Davis, I thought. It was. <laughs> See, at least it wasn't Blood of More. That'd be Blood. Me. What? Miles Davis <laughs> versus the death bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. That's oh man, that's that's a hell of a right though too. Yeah, yeah. and like not a forbidden right because this is also the group that has the the eaters, the eaters of the, the dead. dead. Yeah, yep. We talked about that one yeah. a little bit ago. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this is one that they're like, yeah, we're cool with that. I mean, yeah. I get it if you're trying to save a fallen brother, especially if it's like your pack. Mm. I get that. Start rolling tens. Right. You better better hope. Use that willpower. Right. <laughs> so, again, Sekhmet being a seeker. Mm-hmm. Seekers kind of the ones who are seeking out that knowledge. Constantly moving. While they're moving, teach me a thing. Right? Sure. Uh, well, where are you going with this, buddy? I, I, I'm just trying to get some out of you. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm usually anti-camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and I think one, I think one of these days we'll do a camp episode. It just find the the, the examples where I'm okay with it, <laughs> <laughs> like this one. Well, though, I think camps are fitting for the Silent Striders because it's they are not a tribe that has a singular direction, right? You know, and I think again that's the based on their nomadic nature. I think it's the loss of their homeland. You know, it, it's hard to say we're all going in this one direction when you're never together. You know, when you have a Sound Strider Cairn that might have two people taking all the roles and they're never there at the same time. Mm-hmm. What's their fucking tribal direction? Of course you'll have camps. Yeah, I mean, Wanderers, you know, <laughs> they're moving all the time. Right? And which, they're all moving, which means they're all moving in different directions. Which makes the Wheel of Tha a miracle. But that sept is amazing, so I'll allow it. Um, the, sorry. No, I, I. for me, you know, I like the secrets. I like the idea of, you know, there's always more to learn, there's always more to see, and while we're on it, that curse is not going to fix itself. Ooh, I like that. You know, um, it, 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 when I was making Sekhmet, it felt ideal, especially to pair with that noted messenger. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, why, why is he always all over the place? Because he's a sound strider fan. It's not good enough, though. Yeah. You know, it's just not right. a good enough reason. You know, why is your get angry? Well, because he's a get. Fuck you. <laughs> That's <laughs> not good enough. Have a, have, a, have a legitimate reason. Exactly. You know, so that push to find that, that hidden thing. And then, you know, you, you compile that with his pack mates. You know, someone like Sage Windover Mountain, who was also, you know, uh, an intelligent, uh, a more mentally uh, focused character. Mm-hmm. You know, who also seeks knowledge in that interesting shit. It makes sense where they get their friendship and the strength of that pack all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, it all comes in together on, on top of itself. Oh, that's cool. That's, it just helps form segment. Just, again, such a cool character. Oh, let's not forget Sage, even though this is the Stargazer episode. Those two right. are peas in a pod. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I look at them as like, my, my world of darkness is Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> I like that. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Sage, Sage can't talk. But right. <laughs> segment's always running at the mouth about something, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> Pleasure to have met me. <laughs> but um, I know who you are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if I can uh, take the reins from our uh, from our get our host, sure. Uh, I think that's about time for the episode. Uh, I, I mean, I'd... I had one more quick question. Okay. Okay. Uh, I and we'll throw it to Chris and to Porter. But like, what does playing a Strider mean to you, Chris? You're the guest. You go first. To me. Um, the Striders kind of represented a weird kind of freedom. They're not tied to one location. As much as they want to have a home and everything else like that, they have probably the ultimate freedom. Um, 
they can come and go. They do have to answer to things. But playing a Strider for me was it was the lone wolf without being a lone wolf. You know, you could still be in a pack. Um, you can take your pack with you, or circumstances be that you leave your pack behind for a moment and then come back. And then having the ability to come home was also kind of a huge thing too. So the Striders spoke to me on multiple levels, especially when I first discovered them. I had no real direction in my life, so they just seemed the most accurate for what I was going through at the time when I first uh, discovered them. That's really interesting. Uh, no, no, because I, I was going to say freedom. You know, exactly. um, my first character, you know, he was an Aaron got a He was a crappy character. It's right, your first character. Right, mm-hmm. first character. Right, and you know that I was storytelling duties. and But, you know, when I when I got to play Sackman, there was freedom there. Um, it, it was, I felt more free as that character to to mouth off, to to not look at tradition or what's expected of a character, of, quote, me as a Garu, mm-hmm. you know, speaking of character, you know, and, and just do what I wanted to. Not to a detriment of a game, but but like there wasn't that weight on my shoulders playing the character. Okay. Um, right. You had to perform a specific way. And, right. You know. I didn't feel that playing Sekhmet. And, you know, I mean, I remember one of the first, uh, one of his first missions, you know, he's getting a job and he says, no, nah, that reward's not good enough. <laughs> As a client. Okay. Right? Like the hey. ball's on this kid. No, it's, it's totally... I mean, it's it's totally acceptable. But it's, you know, coming from my background, both as a storyteller and then my form, is a get a, is an Ahram get a Fedris. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I you get don't, that. You do what you're told. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, and, and I think it's ironic because, and I, I know you know, because, you know, Joe, we've known each other this whole time, mm-hmm. is that, you know, when I discovered Sekhmet, there, there was no bone in my body that, filled with wanderlust. <laughs> You know, I, I had a home that I loved. I was surrounded by people. I didn't want to go across the street. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let alone travel the world. I didn't give a shit. I was happy exactly where I was. So to pick that character. And then as I got older, you know, there, there's sort of a, a, a traditional romance mm-hmm. with the road. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can conjure visions of, like, the figure relaxing or laying down in, in, a, in the back of a truck, you know, that's carrying... A, the pipes for a, a, a culvert or something. Yeah. You know? And, like, that's just life of the road. He's going to hitch a ride on that truck until it gets to wherever. He's going to get out and maybe hop a train, you know, and just wander and find his way. And, again, there's something so traditionally romantic about that that I gravitate toward, and I, I absolutely fucking love it. I mean, you know, um, yeah. I spent a year just traveling the country. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it, it really, you know, it is, it's, it's that freedom. And it's, I hate to just put it in a single word, but I hope everything else kind of sends that home. Yeah. No, I like it. That's cool. I do have one more thing. Oh, my God. No, but <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you the reins because this this is important. We need this one first. Go ahead. You, you wanted the reins. Take it. Do you, you got one more thing. Yeah, I was going to wait till after that so people don't just stop and <laughs> stop listening to us. Cause we I'm got, confused. We got yeah. the business to take care I am. of. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. So I will wait for that last thing till after the business. But then the show's over. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> You're fired. What are you, what are you Good. Trying, what are you trying to no sneak? more hosting. What are you trying to sneak by here, Danny? <laughs> Silas Riders. Yes or no? We're, we're we're good on this one. We give it. Oh. S- yeah. Yeah. Nine out of ten. Thumbs waters. up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I give it a uh, six shoe horses out of <laughs> five sets. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. That's impressive. That's <laughs> <laughs> we kind of have to like. We're, we're, no, we don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're we're, we're doing the uh, we're sticking with the format. That's all. No, I absolutely approve of Sound Striders. Yeah, approve. Yeah. I mean, no, obviously, I Chris, you don't have to answer. You already said it's your favorite. Oh, he gave double thumbs they up are, too. Are, He's, uh, we're going with a yeah. double thumbs up. Full full honors for the Sound Striders out of this one. Yeah. Full yeah. honor. Yeah. Very very cool tribe. Cool I mean, history behind them. There, there's some bullshit, but there's. But that there's, goes with every tribe. But I think some of their stuff, is, you know, is definitely able to be validated. Yeah, I think largely that the, the stuff that the, that I'm calling bullshit on with that tribe is stuff that isn't harmful. Right. 
you know, you have other tribes that are hiding things Mm -hmm. or are giving a version of history that is maybe not the version that people should know because it's causing a problem or leading to a problem. And I think, yeah, they just, you don't fucking know. (laughs) But, like, we were talking about something, and I went over and grabbed my clan book, Setite, opened it up, and started reading out of that. And, you know, matching and validating right? and seeing both sides of that coin. Which was very neat. That, that's cool to be able to do that. But yeah. that's a rarity for sure. It's it's an extreme rarity. So <laughs> I, there is validation for some of that stuff. And I thought that was a really neat thing to be able to do. Oh, I completely agree. Yeah. Silent Riders. Go team. Now I hear tell. Mm-hmm. We have a Cubs corner. We do have a Cubs corner. It's a corner. Of which we put the Cubs, where they ask questions and we answer them. <laughs> what do we got today? What happens when a character falls to the worm? Does the player leave the table? Um, oh. I suppose that depends on whether or not they were aware of it. <laughs> I was going to say, that's up to the storyteller, isn't well, it? Well, that's up to how upset the character is or the player is at the time. <laughs> well... And this co- this is a throwback to the rights episode mm-hmm. where the forbidden right, you know, the, the botch was the instant fall to the worm. Well, I, I think if you're, you're in a scenario where they are doing the right of the black spiral, you are intentionally... This is on purpose. No, no, no. It wasn't the black spiral. It was... It was Neither the, the dead eater. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where you're trying to gain the person's memory and you botch and you... I mean, okay, okay, that's forbidden right and everything. But, but, but well, this this offers a context that changes my answer. Okay. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in a situation specifically like that, mm-hmm. where a botch or a failure fucks you, and now you're of the worm. Yeah. And we're using the quotes there. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Um, well, I think a cleansing is not an option, number right, one. Right, right. Because otherwise, that's not a consequence. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. you had to go to Erebus? No. That's the worst of it? Whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah you, no. Just congratulations on the boring story ahead of you. Um, <laughs> so, cleansing, not an option. Um, yeah, that character's Dungeon Rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you could perhaps, if your storyteller's okay with it, and I, I would stress maybe if you have the chops to do it, so if this is your first character or you've only been playing six months, we don't entertain this. Right, right. The new character versus the veteran. Right, yeah. You know, if, if you're if you're new with this, you've handed in your character sheet and good luck on your next one. Sorry about your luck. Um, if you're a vet, maybe you can work out with Showteller like a couple you know, a couple story or two where he's trying to everything's fine, but then aggressively isn't and maybe he gets a merciful death at the hands of his pack mates, who knows? But there's no coming back from it. Yeah. That yeah, character no. is Dunning Rings. Yeah. And I mean, like... So maybe keep him alive just for a couple stories while he hashes that out and, and struggles? Well, again, and, storyteller player ability. Mm-hmm. And and that, that character can become an NPC. Yeah. And, you know, an antagonist. Absolutely. But you are done playing that character. Yeah. Yeah. There's no more. And it's one of those, like, if I lose my character to the worm... On the results of one roll. Oh, I'd be devastated. I'm not getting up and leaving the table. I'm flipping that fucker. Uh, yeah. I You're flipping my table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you a new one. It's fine. Sweet. Uh, but, you know... Um, so are you going to let her follow the worm next time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, you I, want a new table? Uh, you know, yeah. I, I have my new table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that it'll be a better table. Uh, well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also thinking about my new TV because that table will hit the TV. (laughs) (laughs) We'll make it. Uh, It's going to be a whole new living room set. (laughs) Perfect. Uh, That that table will make the rounds, destroying everything. Shadows and Tall Trees, (laughs) Chapter 6, Porter's new living room set. (laughs) Awesome. Heard it here first, folks. But but I think that if, if you're doing... Oh, right, where one roll of the dice... Could possibly land you there? Could possibly land you in the warm embrace of the worm. Maybe don't do that right. Maybe don't do that right. Maybe don't, but that's we're not the boss of whoever did it. Yeah. So that's, that's true. That was your mistake. Just a warning. How about that? Yeah. Just a warning. This is not the dangerous don't list. <laughs> 
it's, on it's the, forbidden for a for, reason. Yeah, I was going to say it's on the forbidden list for a reason. <laughs> I like the dangerous don't list. <laughs> dangerous don't. Yeah, much better. But yeah, it's basically roll a new character. Yep. You know, whether you get up from the table because you need a few minutes to collect yourself or not, yeah, oh, that's up oh, to you. But yeah. I would need some time. I think if you're going to cry, leave the fucking room. Don't put that on your other players. No, no, <laughs> no. Maybe. And hey, if you're going to cry, look, man, you get attached to your character so no one's making yeah, fun of you. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, you I probably, know, if it ever happened, if my character fell the room, I probably would. Like I've never I've, so much emotionally invested into it. Yeah, like I've never oh, had it happen, yeah. but I'd imagine if you know I was yeah. playing a lost segment in a fucking game. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're. I, I'd be in shock. Yeah, I'd be done in rings for that session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lucky for you, you're storyteller, and you can change that if you really want. Ah, uh, he's got six immortality belts. It's not even a real thing. It is now. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Oh, it's still not. <laughs> it's still not even a real thing. Okay. But yeah, like, if I lost... There are certain characters if I lost them. Yeah. You know? And it, it's not, like, the, the amount that I've played them. I mean, sure, the longer you play it, the more attached you get. Ooh, yeah. For sure. But, you know, if I got a chance to play Jasmine again, and she went down... That would tear me up. Mm -hmm. I've never had it happen. I know you have, so it's yeah. A, I think there's a level of fine fuck you then mm -hmm. to it. You know, like oh, this is what you do to me? Fine, fuck you then. I, I could see that. Like, yeah. A level of just gut gut instinct anger. Yeah, it's it's a knee jerk reaction. Yeah. And and I mean, you know that when you sit down to play, there's a possibility. I mean, there's rules for a death roll for a reason. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's an extra piece of bonus Cubs Corner advice there is if if someone loses a character in a game and then they react... Poorly. 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 Well, you, I was going to say an unbecoming matter, but poorly. Cut them some slack. Yeah. Give them, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour to calm down because there is that emotional attachment. And just yeah. cut them some slack, dude. They just... If they did it right... You know, they lost, like, they lost a family a member. Yeah or, yeah, or a part of themselves, you know. So give yeah. them come some fucking slack. Yeah. Agreed. But uh, moving yeah. on to our other yes. segment. Yes, yes. Oh, the Inspirato. The Inspirato Grotto <laughs> is now better. <laughs> it's getting worse. It's, oh, my God. It's, it's getting worse. Oh, my God. Somebody help us and name this it's thing. Inspirato Grotto. Yep. Not better. I, I love how awful that is. <laughs> I... I I mean, yes, it's awful. What are we, fish people now? It, it's like acupuncture, but with a hammer. <laughs> oh. It's Sparato Grotto. Fuck off. When you're a hammer and the only problem you have are nails. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, see, I already used it. So this, this is a new one that clearly needs help. It needs help with a better name. Help. help. Email me. Tell us. Help. Yes. Give us help. Ideas. <laughs> But Please. what this is about is it's a quick round table and we all mention something we've we've read or reading or listened to or whatever through the various forms of media that exist on the fucking planet mm -hmm. to find something that we either found inspiration in or we think you might find inspiration in, something we think you might want to check out. And hopefully that makes, you know, our world's a better place. Um, Joey. Okay. So um my Inspiration for this week is Inspirato Grotto choice. <laughs> oh, God, Gross. Stop awful. it already. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this week. I think it's picking. God, no. Is, shut up. Is a TV show that I found, um, well, it was suggested to me on Prime called Wolf Blood. Okay. Um, it is British and it's kids and a family that are werewolves and they're living their life and they're trying to keep the veil they're trying not to be discovered you know they're dealing with all the problems that werewolves have to deal with and these kids are going to school and they're trying to live their life and i think it's really neat now I just invented this. Sure. So, <laughs> good luck Okay. answering this question. Uh-huh. I'm holding on. But where would you rank this? Because I think we should do this. I think this it deserves mentioning. We mm -hmm. talk about something werewolf-related. Okay. But 
not World of the Apocalypse, but right, right. How how would it fall on the Garu scale? Oh, but you know what I mean. Like with oh. one is like this is nonsense and it'll irritate you all the differences, and five would be like, oh, that's this shouldn't bother you at all. Okay, so it's a one to five scale. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you should not watch the show. It would irritate the piss out of you. Okay. Um, I would rank it a for, for normal people. <laughs> And for normal people, I would rank it a one and a half on the guru scale. Okay, so it's not. It's, it's a werewolf show. It's not a guru show. Right. But but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think for, that's not a bad idea. So for like a brand new player looking for inspiration. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it gives you insight into the problems that they're dealing with. Okay. That's fair. So that's like, you know, how... In at one point, they have a scientist that's basically hunting them, you know, trying to get pictures uh, of the wolf people, mm-hmm. you know, the monsters. Sure. So that's an interesting thing to see how they deal with it. So, but it's fun. It's cheeky. It's British. It's about werewolves. I like it. Excellent. And this is Wolf Blood. Wolf Blood, yes. Because it's the... Um, blood of wolves. Yeah, yeah. No, that's... It, it's blood not... Blood more blood. Yeah. If, you're, if your parents are wolf bloods, you will be a wolf blood. Gotcha. It, it's a one for one. There's no, you know, option to not transform. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wolf Blood on Amazon Prime. Chris, tell us a story. Story? Ah, oh, man. Are we back on the galliards again? <laughs> Sing us the tale. Nah, I don't have a story. Um, but I do know what it's like to make a new character and struggle with coming up with a name. And the internet has come up with some awesome options for name, name generators. And one in particular that I'm looking at is uh, name-generator.org.uk. Oh. Um, it comes up as the first the one hook. if you just type in name generators in Google. And it has them by categories. Like you can do a character name, you can do a fantasy name, you can do street names if you really want to do something like that, or rapper names. <laughs> but then you, Danny. <laughs> what? I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, I think your rapper name should be Curly Boulevard. <laughs> Curly Boulevard? <laughs> Little rapper uh, name, little street kinds, name, you know? Yeah. No comment. It's there's all street. kinds of neat stuff that you can do with these name generators, and some of them you can even go, like, what kind of names are you looking for for, like, your characters? You know, werewolves pops up um, for, under the fantasy oh. ones, dragons, okay. films, you know, things like that. Uh, some of them, if you go with, like, just regular uh, names, you can choose, like, uh, regions that you want to go for. So, like, if you're building a character who's from, you know, we'll just say Spain, okay? You can look and do name generator for common names that pop up in Spanish or, or Spaniard names. Or, you know, just a list of names. It's kind of neat, actually. Hmm. All right. Well, if you're struggling, it might make sense. At least get some inspiration out of it. No, it's a you know, yeah. good thing, yeah. little name generator. And then I'm sure we can pop a link to that in the description. Yeah, we can do that. Cool. Me. Daniel Tyson. Danwell Tyson. Who? Speaking of names. Who? Yes, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna work. Who? That'll deflect it. Who? Man at a stroke. <laughs> no, he's just it. channeling owl. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, that owl, not like the badass, you know. No. Oh, not the badass owl. No, clearly not. <laughs> Alright, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just go with something simple. Um and uh, we mentioned it later. Like really early on, it was supernatural. I mean, the, the, the TV show, correct? Okay, the TV show. I mean, Just for folks who Sam and Dean. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool show, and clearly they're they're hunters. They're not werewolves, but like you know, they, they deal with vampires and they deal with werewolves, and they a lot of the, a lot of similarities from that show. So maybe just use it, you know, as inspiration. Obviously, that's what we're going for here. Um, but like what they deal with as they're trying to survive. Okay. Well, you know, and I can I can take a minute to back that up. I mean, I think the first, I think, five seasons of that, 
are pretty fucking great. They're yeah. really solid. And while they play fast and loose with some of the monster lores, and, you know, like, again, on the Garu scale, mm-hmm. it would be like a one. But, Maybe one and a half, right. But, I mean, look, um, at, look at the vampires when they were killing the vampires. Right. They uh, absolutely take that from the World of Darkness. The well, way to kill the vampires is to less rip head off. More. That's, well, that's... that's yeah, come yeah. On. But um, things like, you know, you get these two guys, you know, and they've got an arsenal in a false bottom in the trunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a cool show. It's entertaining. Yeah, you know, um, they, they, they scam credit cards and hustle pool and shit to make their money. Oh, it's like, full of ideas. Yeah, that's that's Sogaru. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, both of those things. You know, so it's I think it's the little things about those two characters that, you know, yeah, it's not a show about two werewolves that are out killing worm shit. But it very well could be. Yeah, very, very easily. So I gotta back you up on that one. That's a good call. Thanks. Uh, for me, I have um, I don't have a show. Okay. I actually have a podcast. Oh, okay. It's called Rage Across the Dome. No, no, no. Womp womp. No, this um, and actually the funny thing is, is I found it through Amazon. Okay. You know, I have a subscription to Shutter. Okay. And I was looking for you know a show to watch one night just to fucking you know. And they have a few podcasts, like narrative podcasts. Okay. And I, I stumbled upon these, and I, I found one called Video Palace. And I put this on, and it's like a ten-part, uh, it's like a, like a teleplay. Huh. Interesting. Where where it's a, it's a guy who was a VHS aficionado, and in the 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 legend of these so-called white tapes. Mm. And he he finds one and listens to it, and things begin to happen. And um, the the whole series is him investigating the origin of these things and following the threads. And I was just really enthralled and interested. And I mean, like, look at the end of the day, it's a fucking creepypasta. You know, and it's maybe, a, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a 10 hour little story. And I thought it was really interesting. It was definitely worth my time. I like that. So Video Palace, and that's off, it's um, from Shudder um, through Amazon. I mean, there might be other ways to find it. Video yeah. Palace is the name. And, and Joey's, yours was from Amazon as well. As well. Yep. Hashtag not sponsored by Amazon. Not sponsored not. by Amazon. Although we do have an Amazon portal. But yeah, we do have so an that's Amazon That's what I was going to say. Because so. <laughs> we've got to segue into that. That's right. You know, we have our Amazon portal. It's it's a great way to help support us. You just click on the thing, go do your shopping. You don't have to pay any extra money, but they give us a kickback anyway. So, you know, that's on Bezos, not on you. <laughs> you know, in the meantime... Um, if you are feeling ballsier or, you know, feel like showing off how much money you have, <laughs> we, we have a, uh, our, our Patreon, which we get some cool stuff coming back to see, you. Maybe, maybe not feeling ballsy, but you want some extra stuff. It could be any number of reasons. Yeah. could you're, be just because it's a day that ends on why. You're not whatever's the boss in, of yeah, them. Whatever's in their hearts, Danny. Please. How please much do you donate? Oh. Oh. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> no, Blood, it's true. Blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. Time yeah, this, and money. Yeah. This is. So, those of you who are in a place that would like to give back, you know, we have our Patreon and we give back again because yeah. it's one upsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can get some neat shit out of there by donating to our Patreon. You could go to our PayPal and just lob money at us. There's no rewards for that, but it's up to you. That's okay. We'll take it. You're in charge of your life. You can handle it. Yeah, we're not complaining. <laughs> You know, if you like what you hear, five stars. Go, go. iTunes is five stars. It, it makes a makes a big. It makes a difference. It, it gets us out there to other people, and they can, you know, they can fall in love with the show, or they can hate the show, or maybe you give it to someone who, like, like you know, they'll hate it. And it's a it's a fun trick. And we can laugh, <laughs> or you know that they know someone who will like it. You never know, and it's it's all about knowing, and that's half the battle. So giving us five stars will help the knowledge spread its power. Look you at don't that. have to write anything. You can tell us your favorite Crayola color. Thank you. I was in the tall grass there. I'm just powder and power and knowledge. And what the fuck is he talking about anymore? Five stars. This guy lost it. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> ten, out, ten out of ten. Five stars. You know. <laughs> you know. Check out the website because all of that information's there. Yes, yes. Check out that website. We have our game finder, and you know we're working hard to to get as many of those Discord servers out there. You know, lined up for you to come shopping to find the game that's right for you. You check out the rest of our forums, our submission stuff. We've we've got some a couple a book review, at least one. Yep. from one of our members. 
We've got a couple character essays. We've got some stuff from the old Nocturnus days, which is really good reading. Mm-hmm. And we plan to have more. You know, uh, help us, help us. We want that thriving community. Help yeah. us help you. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah. You know, we have uh, the Discord. We have, you know, a, a great community there. So, you know, uh, come on, get involved. You know, we want to be that hub that you, you guys can, we can all fucking come together and share this game and share our love for it and just spread the fucking word. You know, you want to find the right game, you can find the right game. You want to find the information, you can find it. You can find it with us right here at Rage Across the Internet. RageacrossTheInternet.com. We're here for you. And in the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I am Porter. On behalf of Daniel Tyson, producer Joey, our special guest, Chris Kading, thank you again for showing up here, buddy. Not a problem. Thanks for having me again. It's been an absolute pleasure. And hey, you know, everybody, we will see you next week. Be excellent to each other. Take care. We'll see you around.